there's chaos in this world. Well, it tells you she's not attractive to you. Did you read? She's basically telling you that your genetics are not worth transferring on to the next generation. Read more. Every day I get in there and I put out content. You gotta get out there and just dish out content. Just get it out there. Content. I didn't have no trainer. I didn't have no nutrition. Ah! Rachel Ray wasn't cooking meals for me. Who's gonna carry the boats and the logs? So a YouTuber that I've really much enjoyed watching lately is a guy that goes by the name of Captain Sinbad. Uh, although he started his channel talking about how to not play with your wiener. If you practice nofap for extended periods of time, if you retain your semen, if you retain your vital energy, you will have access to knowledge and insights that no other man can have. You'll become a genius. More recently, he has been mostly talking about general personal development principles and how to implement those into his own life. Every facet of my life has improved when I've done a good job of implementing this new protocol. And the protocol is this, adaptation through rapid trial and error. But beside that, he also makes a funny skit every week where he makes a kind of parody of famous people in the personal development space, such as Jordan Peterson and Gary Vee. All these people like, what gives you so much energy? Gratitude. And in this video, I want to talk mostly about these parodies that he makes because while he also often talks about his aspiration of becoming a famous actor and the reality is which he he also often talks about is that while he's failing it has been a struggle for him to get his breakthrough he spent a lot of time sending emails and reaching out to uh, casting directors and agents trying to get a part and trying to get a breakthrough the path to taking part in work that would excite me and fuel me seemed and continues to seem completely blocked off for more times than i care to admit I actually wasted away my free time waiting for that one email response or for the phone to ring. I've pretty much given up all hope that that email or phone call will ever come. And I think that anyone who is active in the creative or filmmaking space knows what this struggle is. Because so often with these kinds of professions, you have to get through these gatekeepers. Casting agents that had all this power over you. And they, they exhibited it, like they exerted it when you were in the room with them. They didn't communicate with you like, you're a person and I'm a person. They communicated with you like, you want something from me. And I don't know if I'm gonna give it to you. Hmm. Now to become a successful actor, you have to be approved by a lot of people. You have to go to all these gatekeepers of the industry that have to give you a chance. And every year, a lot of aspiring actors arrive in Hollywood and every year just as much leave with their hearts broken. To get your big breakthrough, you have to be approved in an industry that rejects most people. So you're always scared and then you always have to get picked. You always have to get picked for things. Yeah. So you're always worried, do people like me? Now this aspect that is a struggle for people that aspire to a creative career is something that has also been in my mind for a long time. Uh, when I started my studies film at the University of Amsterdam, I, you know, like many aspiring filmmakers, I thought of myself as I want to be the next Tarantino or the next Scorsese or the next Bong Joon-ho the genius director screenwriter and beside the question if I actually have the talent uh, to become this which I probably don't a worry that was immediately also in my head is the fact that in order to realize that kind of a vision of a big picture vision I would need millions of dollars I would need access to industry I would have to get past gatekeepers that would give me funding I mean Orson Welles once said it a writer needs a typewriter a painter needs a brush and a canvas a filmmaker needs an army. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> but even for aspiring screenwriters or novelists, it can be a difficult thing because if you have a finished script or a finished novel, you have to be published or your script has to be realized and made into a movie. And this is not easy. I mean, we all know the story of J.K. Rowling, for example, who was constantly rejected by publishers and in the end became this world famous author. But is this gonna happen to us? Probably not. And the same goes for Captain Sinbad. If you are an actor, 
The chances of you making it, we know this, are not that big. And I have a great idea. So do all these idiots. Can you execute it? I think I can. In this life, no one is going to invest because you think you can. Now this is not to discourage any aspiring screenwriters or novelists or filmmakers that want to get into the industry, but I think there is a better option. I mean, we live in a time of the web 2.0, so all consumers can also be producers on these platforms. You don't have to go through gatekeepers anymore to get put on stage. You can create your own stage. And I think that even though YouTube does have a lot of problems and there are concerns about how it's going, it's still a platform that probably is the greatest opportunity for creatives in the history. And this is what I was thinking when I saw his sketches. I mean, he was already a content producer, but his aspiration of acting, he could just do it himself. He could just start making skits and putting them on YouTube, basically practicing his acting skill. This place is under new management by order of the Pinky Blinders. Now with this penny, I will buy a flower to put on your grave and you'll fully realize that your gypsy half really is strong, Mr. Shelby. Are you angry with me? Hey, look at me. Soon we will have a fresh supply of gin, and then you will know that people who mess with the family get a special treatment. Now, of course, Captain Simbad formatted his skits in a way that is YouTube friendly, and you know, it might be difficult to delve into some deeper acting with this, like doing very uh, emotional scenes or sad scenes or angry scenes, but still it is an opportunity for him to practice his own acting skills while building an audience himself and putting himself on stage. Now, the way YouTube works, of course, is that you have to regularly put out content. And the same goes if you have a blog where you, for example, write short stories. And I do think that this, if you are just starting out as a creative uh, worker, as a creative professional, this is a better way of approaching developing your skill set than writing this screenplay or writing a whole novel immediately, because those are projects that you have to you have to put a year in or more of work and to commit yourself to such a long project while you have no idea if it's actually going anywhere once it's finished, you know, if it's gonna get published or what are you, where are you gonna put it? It can be incredibly hard to motivate yourself and to have the discipline to commit to a project this long. It is a better idea to start regularly producing content and building an audience along the way and improving your skills, you know? Making something, finishing it, improving, putting it out there, building a little bit of an audience and try again. And this way you can both put yourself out there, put your work out there and you can improve at the same time. And the protocol is this, adaptation through rapid trial and error. So you don't need the traditional gatekeepers anymore. But the interesting thing is also that once you have an audience and you do want to get into the industry and work with these gatekeepers, you have more opportunities. I mean, look at Gus Johnson, who also does comedic skits. He was running around in his underwear and now he has a deal with Comedy Central. Hey! Hey! And if you're a writer, of course, you can also self-publish these days. I mean, the Nerd Writer, one of the biggest inspirations to this channel, started his channel because he had written a book and he wanted to find an audience to sell it to. And of course, eventually, this channel became a business in itself. So for creative people, there's so much opportunity on this platform. And to quote the late and great Lou Ashby, the sheer amount of talent in this town, any given time, Mind-boggling. That caveman over there, farting in his sleep, one of the greatest rock and roll guitar players of all time. The sheer amount of talent on this platform, mind-boggling. And talking about music, for a lot of singers, songwriters, and bands and performers, YouTube is also a great way to start building an own audience and to publish their music. There's a lot of talent on this platform, and it might even be a better way than getting a record label. I mean, looking at the music industry ever since downloading became a thing, Record companies have become increasingly aggressive with their contracts. Uh, I'm not an expert in this field, but for example, I know that 30 Seconds to Mars, even though with Jared Leto, even though it is a huge worldwide known band, they were 4 million in death to their own record company. So maybe as a beginning musician, it is better to have a direct link to your audience through YouTube or Spotify than to be signed by a record label. So to end this video, the main point is that 
If you are a creative or aspiring filmmaker or artist or director or whatever, you can create your own stage. You don't have to move past these gatekeepers. And it's probably better to develop your skill set in a way where you can make a little project every week or every two weeks and improve like that and build your audience than to commit to these huge projects. And to end this video the same way Captain Simbad always does, for those of you that put yourself on stage, greatness is coming. <laughs>